Now that we've created the planet and the saucer, we're ready to start the animation process. I've scaled down the saucer to a certain size, so it's a bit smaller than the planet. And the first thing we're going to do is animate our planet. Let's set the frame rate. So just as in our tutorial, I'm going to set the frame in and out point for 300 frames. So down at the bottom of the interface, I should see ones on the left hand side. And on the right, I'm going to put 300 frames in both of the boxes there. Make sure that the little icon to the left of the little orange man is clicked on and it is red. It looks like a plus sign with a couple of hooked arrows around the perimeter. When that is red, that means we can set our keyframes for our animation function. I'm going to select the planet and I'm going to go to the channel box. And in the channel box, I'm going to rotate my planet on the Y axis. I'm going to right click on the word rotate Y and I'm going to choose key selected and a red box will appear in rotate Y up in the channels and a red vertical line will appear in my timeline at frame 1. I want this to rotate one revolution by frame 100. So I'll go to frame 100 and then I'll click inside rotate Y number box and put 360. Now if I was to drag through my timeline or play it with the VCR control I'm going to see that my planet is static once it passes the 100 frame marker. So once it comes back around, it'll spin once and that'll be it. But I want this to continue to rotate for the duration of my movie. I'll stop the animation by clicking on the VCR red box. And I'm going to make sure that my graph editor is on my toolbox or my shelf at the bottom. If you do not see the GE under a white box, you'll need to hold down your command and your shift, and you'll need to go to Windows, Animation Editors, and the first choice is the Graph Editor. If my planet selected and I click on that, I'm going to see representation of the key frames that appear in the timeline below with two little black bezier points joined by a green line. I'm going to mark key select that whole thing. And then at the top of the graph editor you'll see a number of little icons comprised of orange and white boxes. I'm going to click on the one that is a single diagonal line with a white box at the top left edge of it. And when I click on it, it straightens the path out. And all that means is that for the duration of my planet when it rotates it'll be consistent instead of slowing down and speeding up. Now I'm going to click on the word rotate Y and go to curves, post infinity, cycle. And what that means is now that if I play through my timeline, the planet continues to rotate for the duration of our animation, no matter how long we decide to make it. Now that I have the planet animated, I'm going to animate the flying saucer. I'm going to the top view and I'll place the flying saucer where I'd like it to begin behind the planet in the upper left hand corner of my top view and I will go to modify freeze transforms. You'll notice that when you do that if you're looking at your channel's window everything zeroes out for translation, rotation, scale. Return to the beginning of the animation timeline and then click and drag through translate XYZ right click and choose key selected. I'm going to go to frame 100 and I'll get my move tool and I'll drag it across the screen now to 200 drag it to the bottom right corner of the top view go to 300 and drag it back the other way if I return to my perspective view now and I would play this I can see that my spaceship is kind of going through my planet so I'm going to change the path but I need to put a reference line in for it 
I'll return to my top view, select the spaceship, pull down the space bar, go to visualize and click on create editable motion path. And it'll give me a physical representation of the path that that ship was taking. So I can see as I drag through the back edge, it starts to cut through the planet itself. So in order to manipulate these points, two things can happen. I can drag to a point in time which I'd like to introduce a new one, and then I can move the spaceship to a new location. Or if I wanted to, I could go to an existing keyframe. Now I can navigate to these existing keyframes down in the VCR control. The triangles with the orange lines in front of them allow me to go back and forward to my keyframes that exist in the timeline based on the selected geometry. So if I was to move to say this keyframe and wanted to move it back further, I could navigate there using this arrow with the orange line and then I could drag it to where I would like it to be. I'll click to go to the next one and maybe I'll pull this one this way. Now this is subjective. I could have Z'd out back to where I was to begin with and I could have dragged through my timeline to locate the spaceship where I'd like to put another keyframe and simply dragged the spaceship to that new location. The choice is up to you. Just be careful that how you change the speed by dragging and introducing new keyframes. Now, when it comes to repositioning any of these, you would never go in and reposition that keyframe by selecting it in your viewport and using your move tool because chances are it'll get pretty out of hand. So make sure that you've navigated to each of those frames if you wish to move existing keyframes using the spaceship to do so. Now that we've set the keyframes for our animation, we want to introduce some lights. I'll hold down the space bar, go to create lights, directional light. Hit four on the keyboard because the light will be buried inside of your planet. Dragging it up, we can now manipulate this to where we'd like it to be. I'd like it to be lit from this corner of my composition. If I were to go to the top view, I can see a little bit more readily where that light is. Now I'd like the light source to point towards the planet. So I can stay in my top view, hit T, and I'll drag the target to the center of the planet. If you wanted to, you could hold X, and you could snap it precisely to it. I'm going to go to my other four views because I want the light to point down to the very center of the planet so that we catch that spaceship as it goes around. I'll hit 4 on the keyboard in my side view, hold down the X, and snap it to the middle of my viewport in my side view. Now if I were to return to my perspective view, the light's pointing pretty much the way I want. I'm going to go to the attributes for the light by hitting Control A. Bring up the intensity a bit, maybe to 4 to start with. Then go to Arnold, Arnold Render View. Click on the red triangle to assess the lighting that we've just introduced. You can use your viewport to manipulate and change the angle of your planet view inside the Arnold Render. Now as I drag through, I can see there's a pretty strong shadow being cast on the planet. And although I might want a shadow, I don't want it to black out any area of that planet. In the attributes for the light, I'll open up shadows. And where it says shadow color, I'll drag that to the right to minimize the cast shadow of the ship. I'd like to light the left hand side of the planet a little bit though. The right looks good, but I need to show a bit of the left hand side as well. With my light selected, I'll hit Command D to duplicate. I'll start to drag that over to the other side, and I can see now that my other side is lit as much as the right. And that has a tendency to flatten out the file. In the light source, the first thing I'm going to do is 
change that light to a spotlight under the attributes. It'll get dark again. Spotlights require more intensity. And we do that by making two adjustments. I'm going to go to the light attributes for the spotlight. And I'm going to make the penumbra angle 10 to soften it. And then I'm going to open up the Arnold tab down below. And I'm going to make the exposure 3.5. And I'm starting to see the left-hand side of the planet again. Now I want to bring that intensity up a bit. So I'll go over to the intensity at the top. And I'll drag to the right a bit. Now, if that's still not enough, I can punch in any number I'd like above 10. We're not limited by that. I could also apply a color to this. So I'll click on color, and I think I'm going to go with the yellow. Now, very often when you add color, you have to start bringing the intensity up even more because adding color adds dark value. So I'll drag on that and intensify it, perhaps. Now, I may want to move this spotlight. If I wanted to manipulate that, I could do it this way in the perspective view.